Hello. I'm Atubo. Just listen. I feel so much. Allow me to use the word. I, I don't think it's the right word, though, but that's what you will understand when I say that because that's what you're used to. I, I feel a fire burning inside of me. Not, not an evil fire now. You know what I mean? The fervency of the Lord consigning this. As I sit here to tell you this truth, there's a fervency. That's the right word. There's a fervency in my heart consigning it. So much truth burning in me. Ha <laughs> Listen, anyone you see opposing Titan is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm telling you the truth. Not with the knowledge of God that he has given to me concerning this. I wouldn't have said that last year. But now I'm telling you this truth. Anyone who's opposed to Titan is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Because you are attacking the very ministry that Jesus represents. What else do you call that? What else do you call that? And I know someone say, if it's important, why is it not recorded in the New Testament? How foolish. You don't even know. Have you? Do you know the New Testament in the first place? You know what you, what, what you call the New Testament is the book of Acts. Who wrote the book of Acts? One man. One person wrote the book of Acts. And you think that one person will capture every event, every teaching, every knowledge that the church was walking in? One man. Writing a letter to so you know, that's why I say this. And and the earlier you understand this, the better. Oh, mashum bradikete shikita yakaba. I have said this severally that if you want to understand what the Bible is, first thing you need to get is it is you see, the Bible we carry is not the word of God. Now, it contains the word of God. The word of God is written in there. But, you see, when we say the Bible is the word of God, we create this mentality that I see this book, men sat down and God was dictating to them what they should write. No, that's not what it is. It's a compendium of testimonies. The, the, the books of testimonies of people who walked with God. That's what the Bible is. So, the book of Acts, first of all, was a letter written by one man, Luke, to a king, Theophilus. And every letter you write, there is something you are trying to communicate. You are not writing everything that happened. There is just something you are trying to communicate. The same thing with all the books, the, the book of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They had something in their mind they wanted to communicate. They were not chronologically writing every step that Jesus took. Everything. That's why John said there are many things Jesus did and taught which are not written. Why are they not written? Because they, they are not important. No, because how many do you want to write? What's the solution then? Jesus gave us the solution. He says, it is good, it is better for you that I go so that the Holy Spirit will come. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you everything. And look at the church today. The church is bound by what is written in the Bible. When the Jesus we serve said we should follow what the Holy Spirit is teaching us. So we quote all the scripture. We quote Abraham. We quote Jacob. We quote Isaiah. We quote the prophet. Yet we haven't measured up to what they had. What did they have? They were not quoting from the Bible. They were quoting from what they heard from the Spirit of God. We are supposed to be better in our day than them. Not being stuck. He said, eh, if, if it is not written in the Bible, then, then forget it. Where is the Spirit of God bearing witness? Our lives with the Spirit is supposed to be confirming what the Bible wrote. Did you get that? Not we trying to live by what the Bible says. Our life of the Spirit is supposed... Jesus wasn't living the Bible. But his life was confirming the Bible.
You know what I mean by the Bible? The law and the prophets. Jesus wouldn't wake up in the morning and read Isaiah. He said, okay, I think it's time to fulfill this. Peter, James, and John, see what we just read? Let's go and fulfill it. No. He was living his life, trusting the Holy Spirit to guide him, trusting the Holy Spirit to teach him. And then when he takes a step, and then his step is, oh, do you remember? You know, you know, we've read this thing before. Isaiah said this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it has just been fulfilled. That is how your life ought to be. So I told you yesterday, Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek was the one who God sent. Now, when I say he's the one who God sent, he's even making it smaller. He, he was the manifestation of God. Melchizedek was God. See? So he, he came to Abraham and he taught, he was the, he didn't just come to receive tithe from Abraham. He first of all taught Abraham about tithing and commanded him to tithe. In response to that, Abraham gave him the tithe. And he blessed Abraham. You don't even know what the blessing of God is. You think the blessing of God is to be rich. You know, sometimes you hear ignorant people say, hey, where does Bill get tithe? How come he's so rich? The blessing of God is not riches. It will make you rich, but it's not riches. You don't quote, you don't quote a living man, a man who's living today, and say he's blessed. No, according to Bible pattern, before you call a man blessed, check the third generation. Check the, 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 the child of the child. No, like the Bible said, the children's children. If you want to know a man who is blessed, you will see his pattern in the third generation. When you see his pattern in the third generation, that is when you can clearly say, this man is blessed. So Bill Gates doesn't even qualify yet. Let the daughter come and continue the work he was doing. Then let the child of the child come and continue the work you're doing. And you look at that one and you say, the grandfather did this. Then you know, oh, this man was blessed. That is how the blessing, of, that's how you recognize the blessing of God. It's not even about a company that have lasted for many years. No, you look, who started this company? Can I still see the, the, the children, the grandchildren walking in the same pattern? Then you know that thing was blessed. Get sense. Get understanding. So Jesus, today I told you, I told you yesterday, I'll tell you how he qualified to be the high priest of our tithe. Remember, the Bible says, Jesus was rich, but for our sakes, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Did you get that? He became poor, so he relinquished his riches because of us. Now, what does that mean? It means every one of us that believe in Jesus Christ have a right to his riches to his blessings to his prosperity because he gave it all up for us now when he gave it all up for us what did the father do the father said now you come come sit as the high priest to administer this wealth to administer this inheritance to administer this blessing so he became the high priest and he called it after the order of Melchizedek because he is the only one the Bible refers to as being the less, the greater blessing the lesser. So God elevated him to that place of high priest. Now he knows who he died for. He knows whose inheritance he, he is going to give to him. He knows. So what do we do today? When we bring the tithe in honor to him, thank you Holy Spirit, he receives it from us. It is Jesus that receives our tithe from us today. Now that's the mistake a lot of people have been making where the tithe is concerned. They take it to the church and they, their eyes are on the church. And then someone say, hey, but when you take it to the church, it means you've given it to the Lord. Now, no, 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 no. Not necessarily, except you heard the Lord command you to take it to the church. If the Lord did not command you to take it to the church, then he has not received it. So you haven't given your tithe to the Lord Jesus yet. 
He's alive. He's not dead. He doesn't need a spokesperson for him. He says he will speak by himself. Jeremiah tells us that in that day none shall say to his neighbor, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least to the greatest. So he wants to relate with you himself. If you are meeting Jesus, he said that's the problem. That's why he said many people go to church, but we are not seeing the society changing. It is because many haven't met Jesus yet. Many don't know Jesus yet. All they know is their church and their pastor. They haven't met Jesus. You can never meet Jesus and still remain the same. Never. The fact that you confess him, oh Jesus, I confess you a lot, doesn't mean you have met him. If you meet Jesus, you will change. Look out for those who have met Jesus, not people who have read about him. Look out for people who have met Jesus. Look at their life. You can tell the difference. And that's what he's calling you. He's call not because he's hiding himself from us. He wants to meet you. He wants to meet you. Are you willing to meet him? So I'm teaching you now. You go to him with your tithe and say, Lord Jesus, I, I bring you honor. I bring you honor with the tithe. And you take it before him. Say, how do I take it before him? Oh. <laughs> you go on your knees or you stand or you lie down wherever you are in your room wherever you are you go before him and say Lord Jesus I just received this blessing and you know what I want to honor you first I want to honor you first that's what I've been telling you it must be the first thing you do it must be the first thing you do you receive a lot on your phone you just say oh money has come in Whoa! And you look around, create a free space for yourself in case you're in the midst of people. You step aside and say, Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you. Thank you. I just received some money now, Lord, and I want to honor you. And you know, I, I'm going to honor you with the tithe. So, Lord, I ask that you receive my tithe from me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I'm ready for instruction right now. Hallelujah. Where do you want me to take this money to? What do you want me to do? It's your money. I recognize it's yours. And the word of the Lord will come to you. And so what if I don't hear the spirit of God at that time? No problem. Relax. Keep the money aside. He will talk to you one day. Oh, someone wrote, wrote me, uh, uh, sent me a message one time. He said, Pastor, I heard you preach this thing. And I, I began to practice it. And for, for a long time, I didn't hear God instruct me. But I was doing what you said. I, I kept it in an account. I was keeping it in an account. But one day, she said, God spoke to me. I said, I should do with something with the tithe. Say, after several months, and I went to withdraw that money. I saw how big it, it was. I was like, wow. And she gave it to what God, where God said she should give it to. And she said, I've never done. I felt so awesome. I never knew I could do something this big for God in my life. Yeah. And she got blessed for it. That, you see, he, listen, he will speak to you. If you seek him, you will find him. I'm telling you the truth. Seek the Lord and you will find him. The tithe doesn't belong to any other person but the Lord Jesus himself and who he will tell you to take it to. When we begin to practice this, I'm telling you the truth, I'm going to go into that tomorrow. You will see how poverty will be driven out of the church and out of the world. Yeah. Say how? I'll tell you tomorrow. These things are already written and clear. But because of ignorance, we don't follow on to know. May God help you and strengthen your heart to receive the truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.